In the second half of 2020, Google introduced Google Analytics 4, which was previously known as App Plus Web. This is a new version of the platform that has now become a default option when you create new properties. So if you're already using the older version of Google Analytics, which is called Universal Analytics, the question is, what now? Should you fully switch to GA4 right now? Should you keep your older setup? And should you migrate at all? All and more will be explained in this video. Make sure you stick around till the end because I will also share some additional tips if you are starting to work on a new project. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to be up to date with Google Analytics 4, make sure to subscribe. When GA App Plus Web was renamed to Google Analytics 4, I noticed a bunch of YouTube channels posting videos with clickbaits and false scarcity, like, oh my God, you're going to lose data, upgrade immediately, switch to GA4. Maybe they did that on purpose to get more views, or maybe they have just no idea what they're talking about. I don't know. But the reality is that Universal Analytics, or you can call it GA3, is not going away anytime soon. There are still millions of websites using it. And if Google decided to shut it down now, or let's say in a year, that would cause a tsunami of complaints and unhappy users. To prove my point, take a look at even older version of Google Analytics called Classic GA. Google stopped supporting this version in 2012, but even till this day, it is still possible to find websites that are using that version and they are still getting data to their reports. So if you're panicking about GA4 and you don't know what to do, stop for a moment, take a deep breath, and let's think about this together. If you want to start using GA4 and use its new features, such as funnels or pathing, then you could definitely implement it on your website. But if you already have Universal Analytics implemented on a site, keep it running as well. Even Google itself is recommending to use both tools in parallel, at least for now. Of course, in the future, maybe a year or so, it will be recommended to use just GA4. But right now, having both tools in parallel is the way to go. Google Analytics 4 has some really cool features, but if we compare that to Universal Analytics, GA4 is also missing some features. The good news is that Google is releasing new features almost every week. So eventually, GA4 should become far more superior in every situation. But we still need to wait for that. So to sum up, if you are using Universal Analytics, keep using it for now, probably a year or maybe even two. And if you want to start using GA4, you can implement it in parallel. By the way, after you watch this video, make sure to read the accompanying guide as well, because it contains some additional tips regarding upgrading to Google Analytics 4. I will post the link below the video. Here I am in my Google Analytics account and I am viewing a Universal Analytics property. So to get started with Google Analytics 4, you should go to the admin and then you have two options. You can either create a new property and then by default, you will get a Google Analytics 4 property or you can click the upgrade to GA4 option right here. This option is available if you are in the Universal Analytics property. The way how you can identify it, whether you are actually in the Universal Analytics property is that in the admin, there will be three columns right here. Account, property, and view. So let's start with the upgrade to GA4 option right here. When you click it, you will be offered to create a new property or to create to an existing GA4 property. So now I presume that you don't have any GA4 properties running, so we will create a new property. Now, in this case, what you should be aware of is that you are not affecting your Universal Analytics property in any way. You will be creating a new property. So if you are afraid of losing the Universal Analytics data, that will not happen. When you do the upgrade to GA4, basically you will just be offered a setup assistant that will help you create and configure the new property, but the old one, I mean the Universal Analytics, will still continue running as it is. So let's create a new property and click get started right here. Then you will see this pop-up that first of all warn you what is going to happen, that you will create a new G4 property, that some basic settings will be copied and reused from the Universal Analytics property, and also that enhanced measurement will be activated. Now enhanced measurement is an automatic event tracking that is available in GA4. That automatic tracking will track things like outbound link clicks, scroll events, interactions with embedded YouTube video players, and several others. Also, if you have 
implemented your universal analytics property with GTAG JS code, you would see this checkbox enabled. Now, the reason why I am not seeing this as enabled because I have implemented Google Analytics with Google Tech Manager. So in that case, GTAG JS is not used. But if Google Analytics is implemented, for example, directly in the code of your website and the code of Google Analytics looks something like this on your website, then this means that Universal Analytics is implemented with GTAG JS and this checkbox will be enabled. So what does it mean is that your new GA4 property will reuse the existing GTAG JS code. So you will not to ask your developers to implement the new code. Also, if you have some event tracking configured with GTAG JS, that will be automatically migrated to GA4 as well. So this means that your events from Universal Analytics will be displayed in your GA4 event reports as well. But not everything here is this straightforward. And there are some considerations that you need to keep in mind. Below the video, I will post a link to this page where considerations when using connected site tags are explained. And on this page, you will learn that even though some interactions and some data will be migrated properly, some things will not and your developers will need to update the gtag.js code on your website. So to avoid confusion in this case, if you ask me, I would say that this is a good moment to start using Google Tag Manager. So you could ask your developers to implement Google Tag Manager on a site, and then you could start building your GA4 setup in Google Tag Manager. Okay, so let's go back to the upgrade pop-up. And once again, since I am mainly focusing to work with Google Tag Manager, I see that this checkbox is disabled for me. So this means that I will need to install Google Analytics 4 property manually with Google Tag Manager after I create a new property. So click Create Property. And then in the new tab, I will see that my new property is created. And then I will see a Setup Assistant. This is like a checklist that you should complete in order to completely configure your new Google Analytics 4 property. So there are quite a bunch of list items right here. I will not dive deeper in this video into those list items, but just to name a few. So for example, here we see linking to Google Ads, to BigQuery, activating Google Signals, configuring some event measurement and so on. And what we need to do right now is that we need to start sending data from a website to a new Google Analytics 4 property. So you can do that by clicking on this icon in the tag installation section or you can go to data streams and add a new stream right here but right now i am going to click here and once you click it you will see that we are redirected to the same data streams section and a data stream is already created automatically for us so data stream basically is uh, a source of data from which you're sending information to your google analyst property and there are several types of data streams like your iOS app, your Android app, or your website, or let's say multiple websites. Then what we need to do is that we need to get the tracking code or more precisely the measurement ID of this particular data stream. So click it and then you will see a window that looks like this. And here is our measurement ID. So if you're familiar with Universal Analytics, you remember that the structure of Universal Analytics tracking code I mean, tracking ID was different. That one started with UA and then some numbers. Right now, the new properties start with G and then some random numbers and letters right here. Also, we can take a quick look at other settings. So right here we have enhanced measurement. So this means that G4 property will automatically be tracking certain events. For example, scrolls, outbound link clicks, video engagement. So this applies just to YouTube video players and then file downloads. If you want to disable this, you can click it right here. But for now, let's keep it as it is. Then you have some instructions how to install this Google Analytics 4 property. So since I am a fan of Google Tag Manager, I will show you how to do that exactly with GTM. And then there are some additional settings. So one of them is really important. So this is tagging settings right here. When you click it, you will be able to modify your existing events. So this will be useful later on when you have more events. You can create new events based on other events that you receive. And you can also configure your domains. So this is needed for cross-domain tracking. And if you want to exclude your internal office's IP address to not see that data coming to your reports, you can click this define internal traffic and then 
configure your internal traffic. So this means that you will need to enter your offices and IP address in this section. All right, so let's go back to our main window and let's click on this icon to copy our measurement ID. Then I will go to Google Tag Manager and we'll need to install a new GA4 property. In Google Tag Manager, let's go to Tags, then click New, Tag Configuration, and choose GA4 Configuration. Click it and paste that measurement ID right here. If you want this tag to automatically track page views, you can keep this checkbox enabled right here. Then we need to fire this tag on all pages. Click triggering and choose all pages. You should also add some additional configuration and fire this tag only when a visitor gives a consent. I mean, if you want your website to be GDPR compliant but this is a topic for another video or another blog post. So I will just post a link to some additional resources below the video for you to get started. But right now, let's just say that we want to fire this tag on all pages. Last but not least, let's name this tag. I usually name it like that, G4 and then page view. And let's save this tag. Now it's time to test. So first of all, we need to enable the preview and debug mode. I click preview right here and then a new tab will open with Google Tag Assistant. Then enter the URL of your website where you want to preview your GA4 property. So this means that your Google Tag Manager container must be already added to that website. And then click Start. The preview mode will start to connect to that website. In my case, it did that successfully. And I also see that the debugger has connected successfully. And now let's check what is happening. So if I go to Container Loaded, this is the equivalent of the page view trigger or all pages trigger. Then I should check whether my GA4 tag has fired. And here it is, GA4 page view. I can click it and I can see to which tracking ID or to which measurement ID was this page view sent. Now let's go to GA4 property, real-time reports and check what is happening there. In GA interface, on the left side, click this clock icon, which is real-time reports, click it. And what you should be aware of is that the real-time reports in this case are a bit tricky. It will take some time for your first page views to appear in real-time reports, because right now, even though I have sent a page view, I see that there are zero users on my website. And then after I paused a video for, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, then the data started coming into my real-time reports. I'm not sure why this is happening exactly. Maybe there is some sort of delay after you create a new property and then you need to wait some time until it can actually start collecting data. But these are just my guesses. I'm not sure why exactly this is happening. But after a while, after you wait, then your data starts coming in right here. So we can see one user, we can see some page views, some events, and so on. Also, another cool thing that will be useful when you have more traffic coming in, into your website is the debug view in GA4. So if you want to enable it, one of the ways is to install a Chrome extension, which is called Google Analytics Debugger. So when I go, let's say to my website, let me just quickly enable it once again. And then when I enable that extension, it turns on a debug mode in Google Analytics. And when you do that, you can then go to your GA interface and then click on debug view right here. And then you will start seeing your interactions right here. Looks like there is some delay in the debug view of GA4 as well, because I had to wait for a bit longer to see the data coming in the debug view right here. I'm not sure if this is expected, but I remember that working on some older properties, I mean, uh, properties that have been created like 30 minutes ago, but let's say a week or, or ago or so, uh, in those properties, the debug view was working properly. So I don't know, maybe this is some sort of like a temporary bug that is happening while I'm recording this video. So when you start seeing your events in the debug view, you can click on it and you will also be able to see what kind of parameters were sent together and what kind of values were sent with each event. So this debug view lets you debug and test events on a more granular level compared to the uh, real-time reports in Universal Analytics. And after you make sure that your data is displayed properly right here, then you can go to Google Tag Manager, click Submit, 
and then enter something like GA4 basic installation and then click publish. And from this moment, all of your visitors will be tracked with Google Analytics 4 as well. But keep in mind that this setup includes only page views and enhanced measurement. So if you have some custom events that you want to track, you will need to configure them manually. However, this goes out of scope of this video and hopefully I will create a tutorial in the future about it. So that was a general process of migration to Google Analytics 4. If you are using GTAG, and I don't mean Google Tags in Google Tag Manager, then your events will be reused in the new property. If that GTAG.js, of course, is connected with your new GA4 property. But this migration will not cover all of your events. For example, checkout steps in your e-commerce tracking will not be properly migrated and you will need to set up some additional tracking. That's why, if you ask me, I'd say that this is a good moment to start using Google Tag Manager and implement GA4 with Google Tag Manager. If your older version of Google Analytics is hard-coded, keep it as it is and implement GA4 with Google Tag Manager. Yes, I know that this requires more time and more work, but in the long run, you will win because you will get more flexibility by managing tracking codes by yourself with Google Tag Manager. If you haven't worked with GTM before, I'll post a link below the video to a tutorial where you can learn how to get started with GTM. Also, I guess that you have one more question. What to do if you are starting to work on a completely new project? Should you still create a universal analytics property? Well, the answer is, it depends. If your tracking needs are fairly basic and you are interested in tracking several interactions, then you can use just GA4 without universal analytics. But if you want to use the full power of the built-in e-commerce tracking in Google Analytics, I would say that currently enhanced e-commerce reports in Universal Analytics are more powerful. That's why I would recommend both Universal Analytics and GA4 properties for this. I believe that in the near future, this will change and it will be enough to have just GA4 for e-commerce tracking. Yes, the implementation of both tools at the same time means more work for you and me. But I believe that after a year or so, the situation will definitely change and it will be completely sufficient to run just Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics, consider subscribing. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.